Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Today I want to continue on with my series about heroes, and I'm going to talk about the traditional way to write a hero. And I mean traditional. I'm going back to that idea, again, that I'm always saying that comes or is expressed by Aristotle, that a hero is a paragon of virtue, because that is what runs through our culture for the last 3,000 years, as what a hero is, and how to write a hero in our literature. And it is good to go over that, and I'm going to go over it in a mechanical way, because I think that to go over it is to explain why SJWs can't write a good hero, why they can't write a good story, and why they are destroying our industry. But even though I'm going to break it down mechanically and talk about it, I don't think that every writer, or any writer really, would break it down and do it mechanically in their mind. They would just have it sitting in the back of their mind. And why? Because these ideas like virtue and where it comes from and where it goes to is something that is part and parcel of the basis of Western civilization. We understand that our society was built on this, and we can see that because there is a whole uh, field of study, even now still, that's based upon these ideas. It's called natural law, and natural law is what, up until about a hundred years ago, all of the laws for Western civilization was actually built on. And so these ideas are the core of our society, the core of our culture, and they still reside there. And I think they still reside in the back of each one of our minds. And so a writer can just pull that a little bit forward and make a character out of it and describe it in ways that he might not able be even able to put into words except on a page. So the thing is, you have the traditional idea of a hero. The traditional idea of a hero is that he is a paragon of virtue. And again, this runs straight through our culture for the last 3,000 years. And the thing is, well, we have to define, first of all, what is virtue? Well, let's go back to the ancient definition of virtue. Well, virtue is the power of man to accomplish his ends. And when I say ends, I mean the nature of man to fulfill his nature, that is to say, Right in that whole definition of virtue itself is the assumption that man has a nature. He has a human nature. It is fixed, and it is fixed to, in order to fulfill a desired end that everyone is supposed to fulfill. And this is just the core of the idea of virtue. And it is, again, baked in our society all the way up until about a hundred years ago. And that ran through everything, that you assume that there was a human nature and that it was to fulfill the end of man. And that's what virtues help us do. And so when you have a hero like this that is built in the tradition way well an SJW can't write that kind of hero they don't they don't believe that anybody has a human nature they believe that nature is just all constructed by the people around you by the society around you that's what socialism is all about everything is con constructed by the society and so they can't write a good hero because they don't actually believe that there's a human nature if you don't believe that there's a human nature you can't actually use virtue in the traditional way that it's supposed to be used if you can't use virtue in the traditional way it's supposed to be used, you can't actually write a hero in the traditional way it's supposed to be written. And the thing is that this is why they also have no audience. Because if you have a traditional writer and he's using the ideas, if he at the very least has an idea that he has to incorporate virtue and that he thinks there is a human nature, at the very least he is thinking to himself in the back of his mind that he is appealing to something and drawing something out of every person that is innately in every person. That is to say that he is explaining his story and telling his story to the widest audience imaginable because he believes that everybody has the same human nature because that's what human nature is. Everybody who is a human being has the same nature. And if you're applying your story and drawing out the idea of hero from that, your story, at its base, appeals to every human being that will ever come across it. And so you are casting your net as wide as possibly can be cast in order to tell your story. That's just part of how it works. Because if you're incorporating human nature, then it's something fundamental to every human being. And so 
you look at SJWs and how they do the opposite. They're saying quite the opposite. They're saying to specific sections of people, this story is not for you. Don't read it. Whereas the per people that are using traditional heroes, they're casting their net as far as it is possible to cast it. And again, this is why the industry is dying, because they're selecting an audience, whereas if you do it in a traditional way and write a hero that is traditional in the traditional way, you are appealing to as many people as possible. And that is really a very key factor in why their so-called heroes are dying on the vine and no one wants to actually read them. And it also leads into the other thing that because these writers, at the very least, are assuming that there is a human nature and that they are tapping into it, what they are trying to do is they're trying to draw something out of you and draw that thing out of you and show it to you and show you how spectacular it is. Whereas the SJWs are doing quite the opposite. They don't believe there's anything to draw out of you. They think that everything is implanted in you and therefore that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to implant something in you. They're trying to plant some ideas within you so that it will grow and you will be on their side. And that's why I'm always saying that their ideas are propaganda. So at the very basis, what they are doing is contrary to the very idea of a hero story itself in the very fundamental idea. And then if we go even further, we talk about the virtues themselves, because usually from the very beginning, from the ancient Greeks all the way through the Romans, through the medievals, through the moderns, Virtue has always been broken down into four very specific categories, and those specific categories are in a specific order, and they go like this. Prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance. Those are the four virtues. And if you look at all of those, and again, it goes back straight to the ancient Greeks and has come all the way forward for at least 3,000 years. If you look at each of those, you'll also see why SJWs can't write a good hero. Because what is prudence? Well, prudence is supposed to be the charioteer. That is to say, it is number one. And you have to have prudence if you want any of these other virtues. They go in line. If you don't have number one, you can't have two, three, and four. If you don't have number two, you can't have three and four. You could have one, but not two but you still can't have three and four then. They go in this order. So you got to have prudence in order to actually have justice, fortitude, and temperance. And what is prudence? Well, prudence is good decision making. Well, how do you make a good decision? Well, the definition of good decision making in this way of thinking about it is that you act in accord with reality. And since you act in accord with reality, then you have a decision that's made which will fulfill itself in reality. And it will just be there for a good decision. But in order to make that good decision, in order to act in accord with reality, first of all, you need to know what reality is. You have to accept reality as it actually is. And you also have to be humble enough to accept your limited place in reality and how reality imposes itself upon you. And again, that's very directly contrary to what SJWs think because they don't want anything to impose itself on them. They don't believe that there is reality that can impose itself on them or if it can, they don't want it. And they think that they can impose their will on reality, which is quite the opposite, that that's what they try to do. And they don't listen to reality. And that's why they do things like ignore the scientific facts like there are two genders and come up with all this nonsense because they're trying to impose their will upon reality. But if you're humble, then you see reality for what it actually is and you understand your limitations within reality. And when you do that, then you can make good decisions, which are prudent decisions. And this is why, again, SJWs can't write a good story. Because the thing is that when you're a writer and you have characters, they have to be prudent. They have to be prudent in order for your story to make sense. That is to say, you have to write a world where you, if you have any extra rules, you have to define them right at the get-go and make sure everybody understands them. And you have to have your characters be subservient to those rules. And if you are doing anything else outside of those rules, then the normal rules of reality apply. And if your characters don't follow either the rules that you have set or the normal rules of reality, then you're, if you have a good editor, your editor is going to say, that doesn't work. You can't do that. 
Why would this person do that? It's against their nature. It's against the narrative that you've already set. This isn't good. Take it out. Change it. You're going to have to get rid of this part. If you have a good editor, that's what they're going to do. That's when they edit for content. That's what they'll tell you. You know, this doesn't make any sense according to reality, according to the reality that you have set up, or even reality itself, because you have to set up those rules and be quite specific about them. But SJWs don't care about that. They, again, just put in contrivance after contrivance because they just want their characters, again, to impose their will upon their reality and everything turn out just fine for them. But if you had a good story, if you have a good story, you have to know that, no, that doesn't work. And again, for all of us, we are all part of Western civilization. We understand these things, again, like virtue and how they play themselves out just innately in the back of our mind because it's what our entire civilization has been built upon for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. And so we understand that when these people are breaking their own rules of continuity and breaking the rules of continuity for Marvel and DC. No, it's not a good story. And we understand why, because it's just contrary to reality. It, that's what it is. They're acting in a, con in a way that's contrary to reality. And that breaks the idea of prudence, even though you might not think of it in those terms. And then if you move on to the other, the next two, they're justice and fortitude. Well, fortitude is basically the courage in order to live these principles in your life, to actually bring out things like justice and live it to its full extent in your life. That's that's what fortitude is. So you take these ideas like justice and courage, which are naturally part of a hero. I mean, think about Captain America. Think about Superman. The justice and courage are just part and parcel of those heroes. And so you have to have those things. But again, these ideas like justice and courage, they incorporate within them something that is a greater idea because justice in its traditional form is to render to every man what is his due. And it doesn't just mean when you strike a bargain with somebody, it's the fact that every man is due something just by the sense of being a man. You know, it is again part of their human nature. Like you owe other people respect to a certain degree just because they are a human being and is part of their human nature nature that they need respect and so you need to pay it to them. So these ideas, again, that are incorporated into the civilization that we live in and therefore into the minds of the writers who are good writers who draw them out, they are referencing larger ideas when they talk about justice. And the same is with fortitude. And because you are create courageous if you have fortitude. And the thing is that this was expressed, I mean, the best way I think this was expressed was probably by Plato, and that's 2,400 years ago. And he said that if you are a person who thinks only about yourself, and yourself is the one that determines all right and wrong, which is a really good definition, by the way, of an SJW, because they think that they are the ultimate arbiter of right and wrong for everything, especially themselves. But Plato says, if you are that kind of person, when push comes to shove, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to flee. You're going to be a coward. You're going to run away. Why? Because if you are the ultimate good, then the ultimate thing that needs to be protected is you. And therefore, you will protect yourself above any other good. And so to be courageous and to say, I'm going to be courageous in order to protect justice, well, that's something outside of you. That's something that is a principle outside of you that you are protecting. And when push comes to shove, no, you're not going to protect that because if you think that you are the ultimate good, then you're going to abandon that and just flee away. You're going to tuck tail and run because you're going to try to preserve yourself above everything else. And this is exactly the reason, again, why in our comic books you can see the difference between a good hero and a bad hero. Because look at the MCU's uh, Iron Man, who thought he was just a man in a can, right? Because after trying to be a hero and actually being a hero, he lost his fortitude. He lost the ability to live up to those, to stand fast in that courage and do what he knew what was right. And he started having panic attacks. 
and this made him a good hero, a well-written hero. But SJWs, they stand there and they do things that don't make any sense. Why would this character stand there and fight for this when there is absolutely no reason? And in most of their stories, I would say all of their stories, there is no reason for these characters to stand and fight. And again, we all know in the back of our minds, why would this character do this? Again, a good editor would say, no, your character development that you've put in so far shows that your character is selfish. They would not stand up and fight for this other person and take hits and blows and stay in a battle where they would get hurt and probably killed. No, they wouldn't do that. They're a selfish person. Th that's wrong. That d doesn't make any sense. A good editor would tell you that. But these SJWs, they put it in their stories anyways, because they don't have editors or editors that will tell them the truth. And so they have these situations which make no sense, and which every one of us out here thinking to ourselves, no, this, this is ridiculous. This is not a good story. And if we move on to the fourth one, well, the fourth one is temperance. And temperance is that thing which allows you to have evenness in your life. It, when I think about it, I think about it as, you know, um, if you have fortitude, you have the courage to go right up to the line in the sand where you live out things like justice right up to the extent of where you can go. But you know there's a line in the sand and you don't step over it. Temperance makes sure you don't step over it because if you step over it, it goes from justice to injustice and you are actually working against yourself then. And I think that the greatest example of SJW uh, example of this in recent history, I, I did a video on it about Jean Grey and one of the X-Men read, and she was saying, oh, no, I didn't, you know, alter the thoughts of those people. No, no, she didn't alter their thoughts. She just went into their heads and planted ideas in there which weren't their own, which were hers, in order to change their minds. But, yeah. She didn't think she altered their thoughts. Of course she altered their thoughts. She stepped way over the line, and she stepped way over the line all the time. And she is turning something which she thinks is justice into injustice, and she is becoming a villain. This is what happens to SJW heroes, because they don't acknowledge this line. They don't acknowledge it at all. They don't acknowledge the line of temperance where there is something you know that you can't go beyond that. And so their heroes are actually villains most of the time. They act in a way that a villain would act. And so these characters that they write are not heroes. These stories that they write are not stories. They're meant to implant ideas in you. And by not using traditional heroes, they are shrinking the audience to a point where no one actually wants to read it. Even if they did tell good stories, which they can't and they don't, they're still shrinking that audience by not using the traditional idea of what a hero is. They're not appealing to as many people as possible. And this, in a nutshell, why is why SJWs not only fail spectacularly at making a hero, at writing a story, but also at selling comic books. And it is because they're ignoring all these traditional ideas of how to write a hero. And I could go on for a whole day, a couple of days probably on this subject because I love this subject and I could go on more about it, but I'm going to have to leave it there because I've already talked for almost 17 minutes now. So if I've given you anything new to think about, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment, give me something new to think about, and hopefully we can use these ideas to bring about, bring back our traditional heroes, make our comics better, and to make certainly our comic book stories better. All right, I'll see you later. Bye.